few months ago, I got another beta. He's been living in the quarantine area ever since. I haven't talked about him yet because I wanted to wait until I could make a proper home. We'll discuss more about him later in the video. Anyway, let's get into the build. I've selected an SRA rimless tank. It measures approximately 24 inches wide by 12 inches deep by 12 inches tall, which equates to 14.2 gallons or 53.8 liters. I won't fill this up to the top with water, so the final volume will be slightly less than that, but it will still be a great footprint for a beta. The vision I have in mind revolves around this piece of driftwood. I've been saving it for over 6 years now. It's a really unique piece that I wanted to be the focal point of a build, and this is finally the one. What I'm picturing is a sunken forest of sorts. It will be a very hardscape focused design that's centered around this piece. As such, it will be the key element that dictates the placement of subsequent pieces, like these cork bark segments. I need to keep the filter in mind as I place these. I've selected a CJ Micron because it's small and I can hide it behind the cork bark. I like how this looks already, so I'll add more cork. I placed a few flats in the back that match the first piece. I also added a round in the midground for more depth. Its curvature matches with the driftwood, so I think they work perfectly together. I also like how this scape looks overall. I'll add significantly more details later on, but this will work well for a base. Before I secure these pieces, I want to modify the one covering the pump. First I have to determine where the water level will be. Something around 8 inches should be sufficient. I'll drill a hole at the appropriate height for the pump's return, and a hole in the bottom for the pump to suck water through. I marked where these holes should go, and drilled through the cork with a 5 8 inch drill bit. With this addressed, I'll secure the cork pieces to the glass with silicone. I applied it to the contact points, and situated them accordingly. I anchored a few of them with tape while the silicone cured. Back the next day, everything is secure and looking good. I'll attach slate to the driftwood to keep it sunk. I drilled holes in these ahead of time to accommodate stainless steel screws. I secured these to the bottom of the driftwood. And back into the tank it goes. I'll include additional elements in a little bit. For now, I'll add the substrates. Including an aqua soil on a beta setup is a good idea. They typically lower the pH, which helps make the environment more favorable. I could go exclusively with this, but it's pretty light and gets blown around easily during maintenance. So I've decided to mix it with coarse sand, fine gravel, and pea pebbles. When combined, all of these components create a cohesive and functional blend. That said, I'm not too concerned with how this looks anyway. I'll conceal it with other materials later on. Anyway, when I add it to the system, I slope it up toward the back to create a greater sense of depth. I think this looks good. As I said though, I'll add more details. First up are a few pieces of spider wood. Since these have finer textures, they'll help tie everything together. What do you think? I nestled them in areas I felt complement the elements already in the tank. I think these really help bring the scape together. If I were to fill this up now though, they might float, so I think it would be best to lock them in with some super glue gel. I applied some between the contact points and pressed java moss into the glue. I also decided to include a few river stones. I placed them near the base of the branches. Other than that, there's not much else I want to do with the hardscape. That means it's finally time to add the plants. I have Anubius Nana Petite, Bulbitis Hutilotai, Busiflandra Brownie Brown, Busiflandra Super Blue, Cryptocorini Lutea, Cryptocorini Wenti Bronze, and Seuss Fosser Tong. My plant selection is very intentional. 
These are primarily epiphytes, which means they don't require a growing medium and will thrive within crevices. This gives me a lot of freedom. I put plants all over the hardscape to align with the sunken forest concept. As I did this, I had to keep the plants hydrated. I sprayed everything down and continued onward. I also added the crypts in a few locations for variation. These aren't epiphytic, so they had to go into the substrate. To refine the look, I added a piece of black poster board on the back of the tank. Nothing crazy here, I simply taped it to the glass. I also put the filter back behind the cork. This time though, I secured a tube and flow head to the return through the hole I made earlier. From there, I moved it over to the rack. It looks good, but will appear even better with water. Let's fill it up. After all of that, you'll notice that the water is a little bit cloudy. No worries, I'll do a water change here shortly. Before that though, I want to add some botanicals. These go hand in hand with a black water setup and are helpful to keep with bettas. They lower the pH and naturally have antifungal properties among other benefits. I have an array of items here that I'll list up on screen. Anyway, as I typically do, I boiled these ahead so they'll sink immediately. I place them around the setup in a way that looks natural and blends with the hardscape. I like how these tied everything together. What do you think? From there I did a quick water change to clear things up. It's looking pretty good and ready for the final touches. I put in a few clumps of Seuss tongue to add some more green. As I said earlier, I want this to be a black water setup. As such, I saved some of the tannins from the boiled botanicals, which I'll use to tint the water. Lastly, to add some texture to the top area, I'll include some Tillandsia. I didn't go too crazy above the rim because I want the focus to be on the water feature. I love how this turned out and I can't wait to see how it grows in long term. It will only look better as the plants grow into the space. I think it has a unique cryptic jungle vibe that's quite appealing. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of seeing it without the betta though. Let's add him to his new home. I'm so glad to finally have him out in the animal room. He's a samurai betta with a big personality. In other words, he's a bit of a hothead. He was housed with a few shrimp in his quarantine tank and would always flare at them and chase them around. I know he would do the same to other fish, so I decided to keep him in this tank alone other than snails. That's also why I dropped the water line down below the top. I feel like this guy would jump right out of the tank otherwise. All in all though, I'm very happy with how this all turned out and with this beautiful fish. What do you think? Do you like how it turned out? Also, I have yet to name this guy so I'm open to suggestions. Let me know down in the comments. That's all for now though. I hope you all enjoyed the video and learned something new. Until next time Serpa Squad, take care and peace.